Live from Nassau in the Bahamas, it's theCUBE, covering Polygon 18. Brought to you by Polymath. We are live here with theCUBE's exclusive coverage at Polycon 18. It's a securitized token conference, but really it's about cryptography, cryptocurrency, blockchain, token economics. The whole community's here. Investors, entrepreneurs, and startups. We have two great guests here from Crypto Chicks, Natalia Hearn and Natalia Ameline. Um, pioneers in the industry doing something really compelling. The first ever blockchain hackathon coming up in April. It's historic, it's the first. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having thanks. us, thank you for having us. So I love the t-shirts, Crypto Chicks, I want yes. one, a uh, few, if I'm buying. Can I buy them on the website? Yeah, can I get them made? Or, a, you know, okay. I can get them. I, I want my daughters to have those immediately. Yeah, so awesome. people in our community know that theCUBE's really been, we love women in tech because there are so many smart women out there. And it, and it's awesome to showcase. But beyond that, it's this real technology being innovated. Talk about what you guys are doing. You have a really important mission, had great success with Crypto Chicks, because this is, this is like a movement inside this community, but it's also happening all around the world. You guys have big plans. Take a minute to explain the group, how you guys are operating, how it's going, and talk about this big event. Um, we started this group because we realized that um, women are underrepresented in the space and you don't need to go far a look at what's going on at this conference, right? Mm -hmm. Even though we are pleased with the increase in turnaround uh, of women in, t in an events like this, but we still have um, ways to improve. So um, we started this uh, group, Crypto Chicks, uh, with the sole mission to um, increase, um, ge improve gender balance and increase participation of women in the community. And we're doing it in a variety of ways, but uh, largely what we try to do is we try to create an environment where it's, uh, women feel safe to learn. Um, it's uh, small classes where women come in, they can ask questions, they can feel at ease. And um, I think it's uh, very important because uh, not um, every woman, I guess not everyone feels comfortable uh, getting up in a big crowd and asking questions. And uh, I think uh, what we do really helpful uh, for a lot of women this way. It's very inspiring also you guys as co-founders. Uh, Natalia, you, we were talking about, you know, as a, you were a professor and you, this education's a big part of it, but also human nature, right? So um, talk about the dynamic and how you guys approach that because there's different styles, both men and women, and we got to kind of get it going together. I mean, you guys got to get critical mass. Now the good news is people are talking about it and it's happening and... Absolutely, I think kind of knowledge, people hear stuff. You know, I, I had a kind of interesting, I uh, was talking to a woman who was in tech, uh, but her English wasn't great and all this kind of stuff, so she called it big coin, which I love it, because <laughs> it is kind of a big coin. You know, out of all the coins, it's the biggest coin, yeah. right? So, um, but, so stuff like this, right? So, uh, and if you go to meetups, you would have, out of, in a room of 100, maybe one or two women. And then they'll go, well, what's a wallet? What, like, what is all this about? Just even the basic, baby stepping through the system. And then, I think, um, but we're focusing on only one part of it. The other part of it is that we're creating a really new level of democracy. And that element, I think we don't, we, that's why we need the education, yeah. right? And education probably, will, well, women is great, but we've got to start a little earlier. The interest should come at, at least in the high school level where you go, well, what is debt? What is value? How do you define yeah. what currency? Actually, all the stuff we're actually doing with the, at the conference here in terms of securities. Is it a security or is it not a security? What, how do you define? So all of that starts early, early on. I've, I've been having conversations at many levels about this. At, at Sundance in, in Fed Film Festival, um, we talked about the role of technology. So it used to be you know, the boys club, and that's now changing, which is great. But also, there's a trend of multidisciplinary things. You mentioned economics and all these things. So the world now is becoming integrated. So math, for instance, there's a lot of math geeks out there, male and female. You don't have to be a coder, per se, right? You can, there's, there's certainly more coding opportunities for women, but it's not just one thing. You can do anything. This is the, 50% of the population is women. If, we're gonna, if this is going to change the world, which it is, 50% of it is going to be impacted too. So they have to have a role in, in what's going on in the community. So it's natural, it should happen. I mean. and absolutely, and then actually one of the reasons, the hackathon, the, the, the women show, the reason it's a first all women hackathon in blockchain, and we actually have two streams. 
and one stream is for hackers who are like are into the nitty gritty of the sort of the coding part, and we actually have support for them as well in terms of learning. And then we also have the business track, where if you have an idea and you think blockchain would be a really good avenue to take that idea, so you can pitch your idea during the hackathon as and well. And just to clarify, this is the, the up and coming hack hackathon that you guys are doing. All women, what's the date? Share the details, share the details. So the, uh, it's going to be actually a conference and hackathon. Uh, they're going to run in parallel. Conference uh, will start on the 6th of April and going through the 8th of April. And the hackathon will happen at the same time. And where is the conference? So the conference is taking place in Toronto. It's going to be, we're partnering with our venue partner, Mars Discovery District. So it's an absolutely amazing venue in Toronto. And also our partner, Mars, has a history of uh, you know uh, promoting the um, women and technology, so it's a good partnership for us. And um, it's going to be, uh, the Kafkathon is going to run about 30 hours, and um, hopefully it, it's going to be a lot of good connections coming out of it. I think one of the things that we want to accomplish in this hackathon for women is uh, to uh, make it easy for them to uh, get opportunities. So uh, most importantly, we want to connect them with employers and that's a great venue for that because we, you know, when we travel, we have a lot of the times um, owners of the companies will approach us and say, you know, we're really looking to diversify our team. Can you help us? Because women just don't apply. Um, I think that's another way we're trying to really infuse more women open up channels community. of opportunities not just have it be like a job interview exactly so networking um, demonstrating skills um, style are you guys seeing a formula that works with people um, with women because we see different uh, conversations around this you know take a certain approach posture this way be different Eventually, you know, I, I interview a lot of women that are saying, oh, I'm going to be hardcore. And some say, I just want to wear high heels and I want to, I'm a fashion person. I, that's who I am. And I, why would I want to change that? Just because I'm a woman. I mean, so there's different views on this. Is there any pattern or formula that you would suggest or observe? You know, I think we live in a really fortunate uh, part of the globe where we can actually do what we want to do. There aren't too many places like that in the world. And I think that we've got to be really thankful for that. And then it really is, and, you know, we are empowered to create opportunities. And, you know, in, in, in this space, it's a really young space. I mean, it's really fundamental. Some people say, well, we've been in it for 10 years. Really, most of the people have been in it for, you know, a couple of years. So don't think, women shouldn't think that, well, there's all these guys and they know what they're doing. They also don't know what they're doing. They're also, everything is changing. I mean, every wallet and every structure that is being created today is going to be a little different tomorrow. It's, it, it's a process. So I just want to feel about that. If you, if you say you're an expert at something here, then you're really a pretender because everyone's always learning. Yeah. And the real pros are humble about that. So that's one observation. But the other one is, and I want to get your reaction to this, because I go to a lot of events, yeah. especially in tech, where a lot of male dominated, you know, enterprise here and there. This community is very mission oriented, and I don't see any signs of lack of inclusion. So I think the door is open, at least my perspective, and certainly we've been covering the blog and the space at Bitcoin since 2010 and crypto and everything else, but being here, I see open doors. Um, I can say the other, other verticals, not so much. Here, it seems open. Do you guys agree with that? What's good about that? If you do agree, how do people walk through those doors? If it's not, what needs to happen? What's your observation? Um, I think it um, depends on the personalities a lot. I find that some personalities, um, the door is open, I'll just walk in. Some personalities are, you know, okay, I want someone to uh, bring me, introduce me, and uh, I think it's uh, like this um, like everywhere. I think uh, in this space, I, I mostly see that it's friendly space. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. But I also think there could be some improvements because, you know, quite frankly, sometimes uh, the culture is uh, not uh, necessarily that welcoming. For example, you know, you go to the chat rooms on the Facebook, as an example, somebody, a woman makes a comment, and after that you'll see uh, you know, lines of uh, guys responding, and ah, what are you doing here, and why did you say really? that? Yeah, it's very yeah. common. It's I IRC find, kind of culture, really. Yeah, so it's, um, you know, some women are perfectly fine with that, yeah. right? And uh, for me, it's like, okay, you know, you, everybody's entitled to opinion, right? Yeah. Uh, but um, some uh, are just, uh, well, next time will not comment, right? Yeah. 
and um, I don't know, maybe guys have a little bit uh, thicker skin and yeah. they take some ridicule better. Uh, I don't know, but yeah. um, I think we, uh, there's still way, ways to make the culture a little bit more open and more, um, I guess, comforted. Natalia, do you agree with, with, with that? What's your yeah, take on I mean, that? I think it really starts with upbringing, again, and how we raise our children. I have three sons, so you know I raise them in a way that I, the way I'd want to be treated in an environment. I'm an engineer, so I've worked with men all my life, and it's this is not unusual for me. It's I've gone to conference all yeah. my life, thousands of people, 20 women. Like Alyssa's, yeah, that's you really thick skin. You guys have thick skin. You've <laughs> seen it. You, you've and, and you know, in, in in a way, yeah. And, and it takes guts, like you said before, to wear high heels and a skirt and really stand out already when you're already standing out. So you got to put your head up, yeah. you know, and you walk into that room. Be yourself, like, yeah, right? Yeah. But don't be afraid. I guess what you're saying is you can have whatever posture you want to have. Yeah. Just. Be proud, keep your chin up, as they say. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's talk about, you mentioned uh, you guys are, are moms. So like I have four kids, two, two daughters. David Vellante also has four as well, same. Um, they're growing, these kids are, that are born now are growing with digital natives. Some are kind of pre, post Facebook, pre Instagram, Snapchat, the range in the spectrum. Certainly gaming has been a big part of the culture of the youth. So people who are digital natives and or have come on uh, with the connected social world it is, they are doing things differently. So I want to get your thoughts as a parent. Um, I get asked the question a lot, should I let him game? Should I let him code? What should I do? What's good? What's bad? There's no data other than kind of anecdotal or vision. I personally believe in gaming as a good future of work scenario as long as you don't OD on it and overdose on too much gaming. I think coding's the same. And so I think this is going to be the tooling of the future. What do you guys think as parents about the exposure of technology? How do you do it? Is there a diet? Is there a recipe? <laughs> I mean, what do you guys think? I think personally it's great. I think the younger kids get exposed to technology, um, the more comfortable they feel with it and uh, the more likely they are to become next, uh, you know, Steve Jobs's and uh, Bill Gates's, etc. And um, I think it's uh, our society, whether some people like it or not, uh, it's moving in a direction where we're becoming more and more technology addicted and dependent on it. We, uh, technology is everywhere, we don't even realize. Um, that is there and um, you know you wake up in the morning you look at the internet you may like it or not but that's the lifestyle these yeah. days right so I think for me with kids uh, we need to give them freedom and we need to observe um, because at the end of the day I think kids are intuitive um, they know what's uh, they what, what they're interested in um, and um, we need to help them nurture their interests so that they uh, grow up and then and they don't need to go to the job uh, that they hate instead they do what they love and yeah. that's how we become a more productive society. And the learning online too is an opportunity to go non-linear, learn things at scale, you don't have to wait for the next class or semester. Your thoughts on this, Natalia? Absolutely, I think every child has a gift and I think it's parents' responsibility to discover that gift instead of shoving your ideas into or your yeah. things that you didn't achieve in life into your children. It's so. called snowplow parent or helicopter parenting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, so absolutely and we are, we are a technology driven society yeah. and I'm, you know, I've I've introduced an engineer, so I'm techie, so I've introduced my sons to a lot of things, but you know what, they've introduced yeah. me, and actually they kept me in this sector. I think the observational thing is really important, freedom with observation. Mm -hmm. That's not monitoring and surveillance or helicoptering, it's really like, let them play, let them explore, let them have a good time, understand it, but be mindful of what you're observing, and Absolutely. that's key. And yeah, too much of anything, it, is not good. You know what I mean? You have to balance your sleep patterns and all this kind of stuff. All of that has to come into a, a, a child's life. <laughs> yeah, maybe intervention is required at some point, you know, when you see that you, your kid is shaky. <laughs> I always say to women in tech, we're moms, like, man, you have it so easy now because you know how hard it is to raise children. Being a parent is super hard, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people look at that need to understand that's how hard it is. It's really a wonderful thing. So thanks for sharing. Looking forward to following the Crypto Chicks and covering the hackathon. So let us know how it goes. Is there going to be any live feeds or Twitter handles or hashtag? What's going they on? They will be and we'll let you know. Thank okay, you great. for the right, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing. Crypto Chicks here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier. Live coverage continuing day two of SiliconANGLE Media's CUBE exclusive coverage of Polygon 18. We'll be right back.